Okay, so welcome back to the channel, and um, we're changing directions now for a little while. Obviously, you guys who follow me on the machining side of it, um, the machines currently are running, all good, they've got jobs to do. Um, and I want to do a few bits on the car. Now, a lot of you know my car, it's been around on the forums years ago, um, it was quite a popular one on the builds on the forums and stuff like that. And a few of you may have seen recently I put it up for sale. Um, now I put it up for sale for top, top money. Um, the car owes me crazy, crazy amounts of money, which I know I'm never gonna get back. I didn't build it to get money back. And it's never gonna appreciate in value because it's not a true RS, it's not an RS500 or a Sapphire Cosworth or you know an RS Turbo or anything like that but it is a very expensive car and a very high quality build. Um, and everything now is crazy money, all your Cosworth parts, Cosworth engines, everything that has gone through group. So it was up for top money, um, or is up for top money, shall I say, um, 75,000 pounds. It owes me a lot more than that. Now there's people out there that say, you're crazy, I can build that in my garage for 20 grand. But you start adding up the prices of everything, um, and you're not going to build it yourself for 20 grand. You're not going to build it yourself for 30 grand. You ain't going to build it yourself for 50 grand. Um, when you get into it, to do it the same as this is done, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So yes, it is up for top money. And because I don't know what to do with the car, that's why I put it out there um, for top money. Because currently, touch wood, I don't need to sell it financially. Um, that's what will happen if business requires me to. But um, at the moment, I don't need to. So I'm not dropping prices or putting it out there for low money for a desperate sale. You know, I'm putting it out there, put the feelings out to see if anyone who likes the car with deep pockets is willing to spend that money on it. Um, but until that point, I've had a couple of inquiries um, for people who are looking to brace and this, that and the other. Uh, two serious inquiries, but they've not gone anywhere as yet. So I want to do some bits on the car because it hasn't done anything in ages. Now, you'll see it's just sat here under the sheet. And other than going for its MOT every year, um, this is pretty much all it's done since 2018 when it was last out of track. So I uh, mainly covered in dog hair. What my plans are, I just first off, is just a generic service. There's a few things on the car that I want to get done. Um, sure if that'll clear yep that's okay so there's a few things on the car that I want to get done um, I left the dashboard out last time I was playing around with some wiring and I might put that back in it literally slots in none of this has to be moved for the dash to come in and out so you can run it raw like this um, or you can put the dashboard back in place to cover it all up because I was fiddling around with a lot of wiring and bits and pieces I left it out um, it's easier and it's a bit of a raw look so a few things, a few things, sorry, that I want to get done. Um, and the first ones are easy. Although the car hasn't done any miles since it was last serviced, there's things like the fuel pumps. It runs twin Bosch. They're not 044s, they're one up. Um, that were fit to the car when Andrew Gallagher done the Shell in 2009. The car didn't run until 2015 or 2016 um, when the engine was ready. The pumps were low mileage um, service items from M Sport when I put them in there. Now, obviously, they had, when I got them, I think they had the kilometers that they'd done written on each pump, can't remember. But last track die done in 2018, if you've run the Bosch 044s or the Bosch series of pumps really hard, they can tend to get a bit noisy and a bit hot and a bit ear, ear as they're going, especially, you can't hear it in the road car so much, but you'll hear it in um, stripped out track cars, especially if they're mounted internally. And um, I can even hear my mounting underneath because of no interior. So I've gone out and pulled, that should be here in a few days, the new Bosch replacement um, to the 044, which is basically called the Bosch 200 fuel pump. Now, it's done by Bosch, it's a genuine Bosch item. It's meant as a replacement for the 044, it supersedes it. And they say it has like 15% or 10% better flow rate, 15%. Um, 
lighter, something like that. Anyway, it's a better pump. So I've ordered two of them, two fuel filters, an oil filter, some oil, um, IGK31 spark plugs, um, and I'm gonna give it a good service. And then we're gonna look at what else we're gonna do. So basically, we're gonna get this up in the air now, and I'm gonna look at taking the fuel pump assembly is in a separate box. So I'm gonna drop that out the car, and have a look at that. And whilst I'm here, as I said, because the car's not really, um, it is for sale if someone offers the correct money, but also if it doesn't sell for that money currently, if I'm financially stable, um, it's not gonna go anywhere otherwise. So I wanna carry on, try and get a bit of enthusiasm back for it, because to be fair, where it's not been used, I kind of lost it. I drive it to the MOT, it puts a big grin on my face, I drive it home again, I put it away. And that's all it's done since last year. Um, and the MOT's due in about a, a month's time. And it hasn't done anything. So I'm thinking I want to change the colour of the wheels too. So these have been white forever. I had these powder coated a long, long time ago. They were done badly. And the person re-powder coated them straight over the top of the old powder coat. Or the powder coat that they'd just done. Which was yellow for whatever reason. And then they were never lacquered. So the first time I took it out on track, all the brake dust embedded itself in the powder coat and they've been black and stained and horrible ever since. So I'm kind of not liking the white wheel. So I'm thinking I might do these anthracite. I might do these a gray anthracite color. Um, I was kind of looking for some MO six spokes, but financially I'm not looking to chuck money at the car um, I'm just looking to, you know, try and drum up a bit of enthusiasm for it again. And I've wanted to change the white wheels for a long time, but never got round to it. So we're looking about doing these anthracite. I could go like a standard silver colour. I'm not sure. Maybe you guys will let me know your opinions. So we're going to do that. We are going to do the service, the fuel pumps, the fuel filters, as I just mentioned. And then I'll look at what else I want to do. But I may also, I mentioned a long time ago in videos, and it kind of got kiboshed, the car got put to the side, machines took over and business took over, um, about getting the car logbooked. So I may still go along that line, purely because if I keep it for myself, it's good to have it done like that. If I ever want to sprint it or do anything competitive, um, chances are pretty slim, but you never know what will happen in the future. And if I'm looking to sell it, that's going to be a massive advantage if someone looks and goes, oh, look, that car's already got a logbook on it um, for competition. So I took it to Lydon Hill, um, famously home of the Rallycross in the UK. And at a sprint event that I was watching some friends at, I had the car kind of gone over by the scrutiny as to give me an idea of what was and wasn't allowed and there was a few things they mentioned and i'll be honest it was about five years ago and i can't really remember now but i remember a couple of things the fuel tank in the back if i show you in here it's a bit dark it's a little bit, you can see my fuel cell there now that's just an alley fuel cell uh, you fill it from inside the car and there's a big round sump that goes under the car now that needs a secondary skin or a second cover over the top of it. But how it's made in that car, Andrew Gallagher fabricated the tank for me when the chassis was done. Because bear in mind, this is before I knew how to weld, before I knew how to do anything. So this car started everything for me. Uh, but we'll go into that another time. But there's not enough room around the tank for a second skin. So I'm considering putting the tank completely back under the car and making it a lot smaller because that is quite a big tank. I think I worked it out to be between 50 and 60 litres. So it's a big tank. Um, so I may fabricate, obviously now I can do that stuff myself. I may put one smaller that goes under the car. The other thing they mentioned was, um, if you remember, I'm still running the Skyline gearbox in this, which is the sequential one, which we had major dramas with. It's working now with no issues, but it hasn't had a hard... Um, good kicking around the track so i'm still reserved on my opinions on this gearbox and anything like that so that's a discussion for a different time but the 
hydraulic control for the center differential with a skyline gearbox to give you your two wheel drive and four wheel drive split is mounted under the seat there. And let's just spin the camera around again. Because um, that pump is a high pressure oil pump or hydraulic pump, and it's, as I just said, high pressure, it needs to be mounted underneath the car or again sealed in a container etc etc behind a firewall so to speak um, so that's not too bad i did buy it a long time ago again thinking i was going to crack on with this probably about five years ago i bought all the connectors to extend the wiring loom um, to put it underneath the car at the back um, or because it's quite small if the tank goes underneath the car i could put it in the back and put a cover over it or put it in a sealed box so there's options for that. That was definitely mentioned um, at the time of speaking to the scrutineer. So there were two things. Obviously, the seats and the harnesses are out of date, but I wouldn't necessarily do them until the point of the car either, or whoever, if, if, if someone bought the car, um, they could change the seats and the harnesses to be in date because these are out of date. Um, or if I ever started to compete or do anything in it, then I wouldn't buy them. For the sake of buying them, I'd do it at the time. The other thing to mention, I've got fire extinguishers. I've got a handheld fire extinguisher in there, and I've got a plumbed in lifeline extinguisher down there, electrical system. Now, again, with most people with track cars, um, I bought them brand new when I was doing the build. You tend to buy them years before you realistically need them because you're fitting out the car and putting everything where you want it. Um, they've run out. That has gone so far without service, it cannot be serviced anymore. And them and Lifeline 2000s have been superseded now by Lifeline 2020, I think it is. Um, so you can't get that bottle serviced anymore. It's still in the green. It's still, when you press the test switch, everything's still armed, it's working good. But again, it cannot be um, used for competition. Same with the handheld. Now the handheld's okay, it's about hundred pounds to replace the bottle for the handheld clip it in job done the full plumbed in electrical they say you can't use the new bottle with the old system now I don't know whether that's true or whether it's just not advisable replace it all which is fair enough um, so that's probably about 700 pound upgrade and then you might get something back for that because again it's perfectly good for track days um, and there's nothing wrong with it it's in the green it would still work and it would hopefully get you out of trouble if you ever needed it. Hopefully you wouldn't, but if you did. But the other option is for sprinting, when I spoke to the scrutineers, if I remove them from the car completely, I don't need them. It's kind of like your, the old rule with a spare wheel for an MOT. You don't need to have a spare wheel, but if you do, it's got to have a good tire on it with the legal limits and it's got to be inflated. So personally, I just wouldn't risk having an extinguisher system in the car and taking it out because I think that's just um, pushing your luck, asking for trouble if you've removed it. If you haven't got one, fair enough, you know, you'd never kick yourself, but if you did have one and you took it out, yeah, that's a bit risky. So they would need to be done. I can't remember, there might have been one or two more things. They did question the brake pots, but I'm pretty sure that a brake fluid reservoir for the brakes and clutch, because it's not a pressurized system and it's in a sealed, it's a proper tilt and triple cylinder um, reservoir. I think that is allowed in the car because it's no different for when you have your brake pots mounted directly to the cylinders on the pedal box. So I think that was okay because it's obviously only gravity fed to the pedal box. I'd have to double check on that. That's... Sorry about the compressor, but that's all I can remember off the top of the head. So. Um, I may get, there's a local scrutineer um, guy that I remember, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, might be Bob or something like that, um, who was in the next town to me, literally five minutes away, that for a fee will come and visit you, inspect a car and tell you what is uh, correct and what is not correct, what needs to be done to pass and do all this sort of stuff for scrutineering and then I could have a list done by him of what needs to be done and then I could work through that list. So. First off, I just want to get the car done, service, new plugs, filters, all that sort of stuff. Just your generic car servicing, get on top of it. Um, the other thing I want to do, you might have seen in my other videos, I had, um, I machined all these billet cam covers. Now I done these when I, pretty much when I was first doing the machines and I got into this and I 
stopped it because of other work coming and I never got back into it. So these were all test pieces. None of these were absolutely perfect. Um, for example, this one here, the cap sits out and it overhangs here. It still seals, but it wasn't perfect. I machined these off looking at putting top hats in for coil on plug. Um, this one was another one, checking out tools, and you can see there's some step over marks, but there's nothing really long, wrong with them. And then later down the line, I realized that they needed clearance for your cams because other people tend to make them with a flat front. And what they do is they shorten the cover um, by about a millimeter to give you clearance because you'll see on the original ones, it's set back this face from the front of the cam. And the reason it's done like that is because the actual cam pulley, where it's recessed and bolts to the end of the camshaft, sits over this lip. So you need this clearance. If not, the cam will touch the cover. So what I done, I put them back in the machine and I machine the ends so they're kind of like factory. Um, so I'm actually gonna put one of these on my car. This one being one of them. It's O-ring sealed, it's ready for the cam trigger. It's got everything I need it to have in there. Yeah, it's a test piece, it's not perfect, but it's on my own car, it doesn't really matter. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna machine um, this on my cam cover, you have to take this off for the coil on plug, the way I've done it with the early um, Denso coils, which I think were off a of Yaris, if I remember correctly. So I'm gonna to machine top hats on, and because my engine sits so far under the bulkhead, you have to do this on the rear one, but to be able to tilt the plug at such an angle to get it out from under the bulkhead. I'll just show you that. Single-handed, if I can. rest under there right so you can see that the plug is under here now if you have this at the, the normal height you can't get it out because it touches the bulkhead there so you have to be able to this one if I can I probably can't lift it up but just under there you'll see a, um, the silver of the aluminium where this one's got top on it you take it out and then you can tilt the plug at this sort of angle and you can actually get it down and put it back in there the rest it doesn't need to be done but I was going to do it on all of them. Um, so I'm going to fit one of them cam covers to this just to sort of trial it out because the one thing I was always wary of and the reason why I never put it out there to sell them was this shape here is very odd on the cam covers. You notice that it's harder to see on this cast one because it's got a bit of damage as well. But you've got your semicircle for the cam and the half moon seals. And then it's an odd shape down here. It kind of straightens out a bit with a straight edge. Now you'll see it's more exaggerated on this cover. So you see it comes kind of semicircle and then it's straight and then kinks down again. And before I ever offered to sell them to someone, I wanted to check whether that was gonna seal okay. And I never got round to it. We were gonna put this on an engine and test it and other things just got in the way and it didn't happen. They just got thrown to one side. So I've got some new seals up here. Um, I've had them for ages, again, just not got round to it. So I'm gonna put them on the car, get myself some sealer because everyone says you need to dab in the corners to make sure you don't get any weep. And then I'm gonna put a cover on the car. So yeah, we will be doing a little bit of work to it. Try and get some enthusiasm back for it. And then maybe, just maybe, um, I'll use it. Who knows? But we'll go into that here in another video. So. Yeah, that's just a quick rundown of what we're gonna be doing and what you'll be seeing in future on the channel. The ones of you that are used to the machining is I may jump back and forwards to a few bits and pieces on the machining, but for a little while now, I think I'm gonna do a few bits about the cars for you guys who wanna see it. So yeah, if you um, like the content, you wanna see more, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon. Cheers for watching.